and welcome to another episode of the Digital Electronic World Point Report with your hostess Margarita. Today is President's Day 2024 and it is February 19th, which is interesting because oftentimes we think that President's Day can be celebrated for an entire month, for an entire week, and there are some people who believe that President's Day as a holiday could possibly be outdated. Neither is necessarily incorrect. It is true that many, many years ago, it used to be that the celebration of presidents used to be an entire series of days, possibly because it was necessary to celebrate all of the presidents well beyond just the president that was currently in office. Now, I don't say this as a wonderment. I say this because over the years, the idea of celebrating the presidency has changed from what it began as, for various reasons. In a few moments, I will read some of the presidents that have been president over the years of the country's history. But some of you will find there are errors. What our history as the United States of America has shown is it is riddled with inaccuracies. This is true. And you will find that I have gone ahead and made some corrections, but I will also let you know which ones I have corrected, and I will be asking you to please add in your own corrections as well. Over the last five years, there has been much conversation about why Names themselves are also relevant in our country's history. And this too becomes essential in how we celebrate our own American history. Even when I say something such as Americana, it is questioned. Can I say Americana? Or should I say Americana? This is true. I get called on by people who say, if I am bilingual, meaning if I can speak Spanish, why don't I just say it in Spanish? Why do I have to say it in a kind of westernized version of Spanish? But that's for another day. Because when we begin to talk about the generations of being American and what it means to be assimilated into a country, that's a conversation in and of itself. And for today, let's really stick to subject, shall we? It is important to discuss the importance of the traditions of the presidency. It does have a burden in and of itself. To be president of anything is to be a leader, is to have upon one's shoulders a big burden of decision making. And I don't see that in jest. I see that with the trueness of responsibility. Every country has its own realization of what that particular country has decided its leader will embark on to be a true leader. In an earlier rendition of my reading of the presidents, there was a lot of background noise. People with their cars. People with their engines and people yelling at their family members. Not to mention the gale force winds in the background, which were nature's reminder that there is change in our midst. 
That in and of itself is a reminder that this is a presidential election year. This is true. And any time there is a presidential election upon us in the United States, we stir about. We know there is much to be responsible for with our ballots. Every person who is an American citizen gets one ballot, one vote. It's a huge responsibility. And we don't embark on this lightly. Such is why. Such is why. Today being President's Day, I shall tell you Knowing the presidents is not a simple task for any of the people who have had to become a U.S. citizen, let alone memorizing all of the presidents. But to, for any person who was born into citizenry in the United States, it is not to be taken lightly either. So, let me begin. But before I begin, I shall say, do not take this naming of the presidents as your citizenship class. I am simply reading this as a pivotal reminder that every year we should always know every person who decided to run for the presidency understood the burden that they were shouldering. George Washington, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, James Monroe, John Quincy Adams, Andrew Jackson, Martin Van Buren, William H. Harrison, John Tyler, James K. Polk, Zachary Taylor, Millard Fillmore, Franklin Pierce, James Buchanan, Abraham Lincoln, Frank, excuse me, Andrew Johnson, Ulysses S. Grant, Rutherford B. Hayes, James A. Garfield, Chester A. Arthur, Grover Cleveland, Benjamin Harrison, Grover Cleveland, William McKinley, Theodore Roosevelt, William Howard Taft, Woodrow Wilson, Warren G. Harding, Calvin Coolidge, Herbert Hoover, Franklin D. Roosevelt, Harry S. Truman, Dwight D. Eisenhower, John F. Kennedy, Lyndon B. Johnson, Richard Ken Nixon, Gerald Ford, Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, George Herbert Walker Bush, William Jefferson Clinton, George Walker Bush, Barack Hussein Obama, Donald J. Trump, Joseph R. Biden, Jr. The importance of recognizing the presidents for their leadership. As controversial as some presidents may be and others may not be, the office of the presidency is nonetheless Notable. It is essential that you also know there are some errors in this information, such as, for example, President Barack Obama served twice 
He is not noted as serving twice in this listing. He did get reelected. Also, you will notice that Grover Cleveland shows up twice, reflecting his reelection. Another important factoid. I made the correction already. The website where I found the names only had President Clinton as Bill Clinton, but I made the correction because his official name is William Jefferson Clinton. The same is for Donald Trump. His official name is Donald J. Trump. And President Biden was not noted on the website. I added him in. He is the current president, the 46th president of the United States, and his name is Joseph R. Biden Jr. It is important to note these mistakes. I will also point you to this beautiful scarf, which I wear on very special occasions. I bought it while on a visit to Washington, D.C. It has the signatures of the presidents. At that time, President Barack Obama was president, and this is why his is the signature, which was the most recent at that. Should you ever have any questions as to the authenticity of some of the information, you can always look it up yourself. Sometimes the information is not always up to date, this is true, which is why it is always good to double check. But I for one can tell you I have a very special collection regarding the presidents. And I'm going to share some of that collection so that you can see it at this moment. I just showed you my scarf, but right now I'm going to show you other portions of this collection. One moment while I do just that. And of course, I'm going to explain, for those of you that are watching on the video, because I have people that are listening, who can listen this, listen to this on my podcast at a later time. But I'm going to explain as I go what exactly I am showing. In the collection, you will see a lovely bag, which is from the re-election. This is a quote from President Barack Obama. It says, this is a country where ordinary people find it in their hearts, find in their hearts the courage to do extraordinary things. Again, this is a country where ordinary people find in their hearts the courage to do extraordinary things. I also have a book written by Jimmy Carter, President Jimmy Carter, entitled Palestine Peace, Not Apartheid. I also have in the collection a book written by Barack Obama, President Barack Obama, The Audacity of Hope. In this lovely collection, I also have a hat which was from the POTUS 44 collection. I also have these pens which were sold during the inauguration of the first election. 
and this paperweight, and this other pen. And here are Presidents Ronald Reagan, Gerald Ford, Jimmy Carter, and Richard Nixon. And here is a audiobook, unabridged, Our Endangered Values, by President Jimmy Carter. I also have a or an ornament, which is from the White House Historical Association. And additionally, what I have is an architectural feat, which is a building which was rebuilt three times. This is the second rendition of the building. And correction, it's been built four times, actually. One of the architects was William Weeks, a famous architect known for his various building structures. This is one of the houses that he's built. Now that I have shared this interesting collection of presidential wonderment, I want to show you something additional. Musical. Behind me you're going to see something quite interesting. Do you see this here? Stars and Stripes Forever. John Philip Sousa is well known for having written the song. And what I have here is the actual music. It is fascinating to me that anyone at any moment could pick this up and play it. Fascinating. I found this once at a swap meet and have held on to it because I find it a privilege to own. It is extraordinary to have been able to share this collection with you today. The reason that you also see this print behind me on the wall is because it is from a collection of two. I have both of them. And this one is here. These are Chinese prints, Asian prints. They were given to one of my siblings by a college friend whom he studied with at the university at Princeton University in the 1970s. And it was given to him and he gave them in turn to me. I hold on to them because I think it's very important to treasure the importance of travel. Travel to different parts of the world. And we have various presidents who have traveled to Asia to embark on negotiations that are vital to global peace and security. I have traveled to portions of the world which are unique, specifically Singapore, and I understand the vitality of regions of the world which contribute to facets unknown to many. And though I have never been to the places where this magnificent print reflects I understand the importance of such a beautiful design because it speaks to the fascinating era of a time in the world where there were communities and societies that resolved their differences peacefully and calmly and communicated effectively. 
that we shall be able to do that through diplomacy in ways that countries have been able to previously is my expectation. I certainly expect that you have been able to learn something from my quaint presidential collection. But before I am to complete my sharing, let me show you one last thing, which is this here. You rarely see the... I'm just going to put this right up here for you to be able to understand what I'm discussing a little better. You rarely see the human mind so mechanized as simplistically as that. And rarely do you trek through the world in ways unbeknownst. But when you button up as these women did in the 1940s and hear it in ways unbeknownst to most, you begin to understand that eras of then are similar, but not the same to eras of now. And so let me tell you how important it is to begin to recognize, realize, and respect the trueness of what it is to Understand that artwork of every kind is important to value. And I say this because I was at a conference once and I purchased this lovely artwork from the artist that made it. And I've held on to it for years. A beautiful card collection. And sometimes you find yourself in the most interesting places. And you speak to some of the most interesting people. And it can be 10 years later and you realize that was fascinating. And so I remind you, today, President's Day, 2024, appreciate the wonderment of leadership because it is in this fascinating country, the United States of America, that we all find ourselves with some of the beautiful liberties that are rare. Because not every country does have what this country has. You wonder... What is this woman talking about? How is it that she could be so verbose and not to repeat so many words? I have said few words, technically, and have yet more to discuss with you. But for now, that will do. We must all repose for a moment. Think about what it means to live in a democracy where leadership is guided by reflection and responsibility where we must be fiscally responsible, not only for others, but for ourselves. Because of the future, after all, and what it means 
for the communities we live in and for the planet we live on. Have a great day. From the Digital Electronic World Point Report, this is Margarita Carrillo.